as a first time owner operator of a tractor I quickly learned that uh, moving dirt around can be a little tricky namely because of the angle of the bucket and trying to uh, scoop dirt if this is not uh, level or at least at the angle of direction of travel and apparently a bucket level indicator is a good tool to have. I don't know if there was the option on this tractor when I bought it. I wasn't aware of it at the time. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, and just build my own. And hopefully that helps me out with the uh, dirt scooping. So that didn't take too long. Here it is. Bucket level indicator. Sweet. Alright, getting serious here now. I've watched a few videos um, of uh, ideas on how to build a bucket level indicator, so I'm going to use a couple of those ideas to, to make my own here, and I think these are the materials I'm going to need. I've got this uh, rod here, of course, that'll be used uh, as the actual uh, position indicator, um, mm -hmm. and that clamp, that's one of those uh, clamps I use for putting on like I-beams or um, trusses and buildings to hang like electrical or conduit or whatever from them. Um, but I'll go ahead and use that to clamp it to the front, uh, the arm of the f uh, front end loader and then use this um, eye bolt here and that'll be uh, basically a guide for the uh, for the rod. And this is a uh, old, old blown out lift cylinder that I got lying around and I'm going to use just the end and this part of the rod. I'm going to go ahead and cut that off here um, that'll connect to this rod, and I had another, oh, here it is, okay. And then this, uh, which is the ball end for <clears throat> a lift cylinder, I'll connect that to the, uh, the bucket and secure it with some pipe clamps. I don't want to have to drill into uh, any part of the... Uh, the front end loader so I'll just use clamps on it for now if those don't work out then maybe I might need to weld it but we'll try this first to make the job easier I went ahead and took the bucket off now I know why I got that quick attach although wasn't necessarily for this reason and uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount this uh, that ball joint on this part of the of the bucket uh, or the mechanism here the issue is is that obviously that's round and this is flat and what I want to do is just take off some material here so that it will I can get a pipe clamp around here um, so I'm gonna cut it here or maybe bend this around and round it out a little bit or maybe just cut it off completely and clamp it I'm not sure I'm kind of making it up as I go along here if you saw one of my previous videos where I was doing work on my utility trailer, uh, you'd see that at, uh, in addition to hauling things with it, I also like to use it as a work platform. My uh, my bench vise broke. I haven't replaced it yet, so yeah, I just clamp stuff onto the uh, onto the trailer to work on it. Seems to do all right. Of course, when Working with a grinder and creating sparks, it's always a good idea to have a gas can nearby. My original thought was to you know, cut these and then just kind of hammer them down and round them over and they would kind of conform to that uh, tube more, but it turns out that that's, <laughs> that's pretty thick, that's not going to want to, that's not going to want to bend easily, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut them right off. So 
So there's that uh, ball link all hacked up. It's uh, not pretty, but it's going to do the job. And uh, I'll go ahead and spray that with some black paint over the bare metal and uh, get it put on the tractor. Yeah. Still haven't picked up any uh, like black or stolen whatever, so I'll go with the barbecue paint, which should work better than anything you'd think. You know, it's not going to come off if it gets too hot. It's nice that the black paint dries rather quickly. Exactly why uh, Henry Ford used it on his Model T's so he could produce more cars per hour because the paint dried fast. Which is why he said uh, the customer can have any color he wants as long as it's black. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on here with a uh, hose clamp. Yeah, with these uh, with these pipe clamps, they got the flathead uh, slot here, and then they're also a hex. And I found out that uh, now you can tighten that down as tight as you can with a screwdriver with a flathead screwdriver, and it's not really tight until you get a wrench on it. And I already tightened this down with a screwdriver as much as I could. And it's got a wrench on here, and that's another you know, half a turn. Or more. <laughs> you don't want to go too far. You can strip out the, this this band, but you definitely can get it tighter with a wrench than than a screwdriver. So first, the uh, dilemma here with this project. Um, that here is the shaft that I just cut off of that old cylinder. It's a good thing for me for being somewhat of a pack rat because I I kept it around even though uh, it was completely useless until now, right? But I'm using that because that's threads onto the uh, uh, ball cup there and um, so that needs to go on here but they won't fit together with this coupler because the coupler fits on one end I have another one that slides over now it's too big here um, I mean I could make it work I guess uh, ideally actually I would just take uh, cut threads into here and it might actually work but I don't have a, a die to do that uh, or I could you now take that and put it on the lathe and turn it down so that that coupler fits over the sleeve but I don't have a lathe so creative solutions coming up I guess I think it was Benjamin Franklin that said if you don't have a lathe, use a cordless drill, two clamps, and an angle grinder. I'm taking this rod, I clamp it to my utility trailer and then heating it up with the torch and then making a Z-bend in it. Painting my utility trailer with that uh, barbecue black, not such a bad idea now, is it? So now that I got the, the Z bend in the rod there and put it back on, I, I was pretty sure I wasn't going to get that bend in the right spot, but fortunately I got some adjustment here. We just um, adjust the uh, little bracket here. And now I have set the bucket level. Not really, I'm on level ground. I set the bucket level and now I'll set that clamp to where it's directly at the top of the Z bend. I'll go ahead and tighten that down with a wrench. Well, of course, when the bucket is level, uh, this indicator rod will fall down into the crook here of that uh, guide bolt or the eye bolt there, and that should indicate level. There was a lot of extra rod sticking up here that wasn't necessary, so I went ahead and uh, rolled the bucket forward. Then I marked a spot to cut it. Of course, you want to roll the bucket forward all the way before you mark it otherwise you might end up marking this thing too short and cutting it here none next thing you know it's falling out of the guide when you put the bucket forward so I uh, 
cut that off, bent it down, put some electrical tape on here just so it's not a safety hazard because, you know, it's all fun and games until someone losses an eye. Now, because this bracket is on the tractor side of the quick attach, if I do remove the bucket, this can just stay here. I don't have to remove it, although if I did need to remove it for, for whatever reason, I can just release that clip and that ball link will come out. I'm taking this out on a level part of the driveway to test this out. Of course this setup only works when the bucket is at ground level, but then again, I'm not planning on taking dirt from the top of a pile either. After the initial test uh, from doing this from the driver's seat, the, and I set this down, the bucket's angled down a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and adjust this eye bolt and bring it back a little bit, a smidge, just a smidge, and then uh, that should pretty much dial it in. That adjustment looks pretty good now. Maybe after a few hours of seat time, I'll get a better feel for the bucket and won't need to use the indicator. But for now, it's going to help me out being the tractor noob that I am. <laughs> 